Hey guys, Andy Glass here, Glass Impressions. It's been a while since I've been able to grab the camera. We welcome our second child into the world here about a month ago. His name is Owen Andrew Glass, uh, but it's been taking a lot of my time away from the shop. And then when I have been in the shop, I've been doing some shop cabinet builds, which I have filmed. I just haven't been able to collectively get all that footage together and edit it up for you guys, but it will be coming, it will be coming. Um, in addition to that, we've been doing some uh, organizational stuff, uh, shop layout. We got a new edge bander over there. So pardon the mess, pardon the background noise. We're gonna document a small closet that I need to build for a client for an upstairs uh, closet. Simple tower, adjustable shelves, and a simple shelf. We're gonna get the ShopBot CNC fired up. Then we're gonna head over to the edge bander, get all that uh, melamine covered up. We'll come back to the assembly table, get everything assembled up, and then we'll buzz over and get it installed. So with the CNC on, now we need to home it. So it's gonna go ahead and do its cycle and it's gonna set the homing sequence right here due to the proximity switches. So now we have our machine and our surfacing bit zeroed to the top of our spoil board. We're gonna take one thousandth of an inch off that top and check for flatness. Now it's very humid up here this time of year in North Dakota. Now it gets humid everywhere else, but when you suck all that air through that vacuum table, that MDF surface board swells up. And before every day, and maybe even multiple times a day, I surface that nice and smooth and flat to the axes of the CNC machine. This cabinet software is called Mosaic Cabinet and Closet Software, and it's very, very powerful, very in-depth. Now, if I turn off the walls, there is our simple closet. It is a tall tower with all adjustable shelves, and then a single shelf that will be held up with some standard white plastic, or excuse me, white metal supports with a closet rod on it. We can go ahead and run our cut list. And we basically pick all the parts we want, what room, what cabinets, whatever we want to do, this software here. Now it automatically shows us how many pieces of material we need. So we need three sheets of material. On the first sheet, it's going to do the sides. So on the bottom here is the left, top here is the right. Here's the nailers. We can go ahead and remove the remnants so it doesn't cut that small part out. Now here's the bottom, the top, one, two adjustable shelves, and then the back right here, and then another remnant that I'm going to remove because I don't want it cut. And then the top of the actual hanging shelf, and then the remaining three adjustable shelves. Now here's a large remnant that I'm going to cut. I'm also going to cut that remnant, and also going to cut that remnant. So now, when I go view all patterns, I can generate the G code. Code is generated. We can go ahead and get some material loaded on up. The first tool is a five millimeter drill that are gonna drill all the adjustable shelf pin holes for the five millimeter shelf pin. The second tool is a half inch down cutting end mill. This is gonna cut all our dados and rabbits for our joinery of our cabinet. The third tool is in the spindle right now. It is our 3 8 inch compression bit that has a up geometry and a down geometry, otherwise known as a compression bit. What that does is it pushes the top melamine 
or the wood fibers down and the bottom up so you don't get any tear out either on the top or bottom. It's intended for through cut and does an excellent job. Let's put these tools back and run the machine. Now all my tools here are Amana tools. Um, I get them from toolstoday.com, extremely fast shipping, really good prices, and the cut quality of the tools is amazing. So check that out below. Um, I'll have some overlays on this video of the tools I'm using in this particular product, as well as some links in the description. I have quickly decided that we'll run this first sheet without the dust shoe on, and it has minimal cutting and dust producing abilities. So we'll run this one without the dust shoe, and the following two sheets, we'll put that on and keep my lung nice and clean. I just realized I made a mistake in the thickness of my material in my cabinet software. So I have made the change in the computer. I'm going to rerun the joinery and the profile cut, but this time I'm going to slap on the dust shoe. The reason I had to rerun that material uh, or that sheet was because I forgot to mic my material. Now this material is 0.77 inches thick, which is a roughly 20 thousandths or 15 thousandths, excuse me, over a 0.75 standard three quarter inch material. Now, if I were to ram the 0.75 thickness in my computer, this material would not fit in the joinery. I re-ran it, it made the joinery a little bit wider, and now our material fits absolutely perfect in these grooves and the rabbits in the front that are eventually gonna hold the top and bottom. So I'm gonna turn on my dust collection, I'm gonna clean off this top, and we'll go ahead and load up sheet number two and continue to get cracking. As you saw, I did put the labels on this material. Sheet number two is loaded on the CNC. All the settings are the same. We still have to maintain the Z0 that we got earlier on the spoil board. I'm gonna keep the dust shoe on for the second and third sheet. 
I'm gonna go load the program, hit start. You guys enjoy the time lapse. The ShopBot CNC did an excellent job of drilling our holes, milling out our joinery, and cutting out the parts. Now here I have a small nailer for the back vertical tower. This basically fits on the back of the unit so that you can screw through it and not give and have a gap in between. But I'm using this as a demonstration. This is melamine. There is a laminate coating on both sides with a particle board core. The particle board is ugly and we need to change that. This is where the Holzer edge bander comes into play. This is an older used machine. I just brought it into the shop here about four months ago and it is an absolute industrial powerhouse when it comes to edge banding. It does one job and one job very, very well. It puts edge banding on material. Edge banding is laminate just like the top or PVC. Now this stuff is PVC here and it's on a big coil on the back which you'll see as we tour around and some b-roll shoots over the top. The edge bander applies glue to the particle board on your parts. Then there's a pressure roller that applies pressure to the edge banding that you apply. Two cutters come and trim it to size with a little bit of excess on the end. And then when you get to here, there are four trimmers. One that trims the front of the material, one that trims the bottom of the material, one trims the top of the material, one trims the end of the material. When it all comes out, Everything is nice and crisp and clean and flush to your material. So let's get this machine fired up and we'll put some edge banding on our parts. All our parts are cut, all our parts are edge banded. I have the right side sitting on my four foot by eight foot assembly table. It's brand new, intended for this exact purpose, assembling large, large, long cabinets, tall cabinets. My camera died. I'm gonna catch you up to where we're at or what you missed, but basically I've got the back, the top, bottom um, on, and uh, everything is all clamped up. Um, what I'd like to do here is take this time to ensure that the top rabbits are extremely tight and there's no gaps. Uh, being it as a rabbit, I don't have any way to get clamping force um, on the tops and bottoms. And then I lied at the beginning, I did have to use screws on the tops of the backs. Um, because I don't have clamps this long, which is not a big deal. They will never be seen. They'll be underneath and on top. So give these about uh, 20 minutes or so, and then I will remove the clamps, put the other side on, and get these clamps back on to have the entire thing cook. And we can go ahead and work on install. So uh, stick around. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. As you can see, I'm not actually in the closet. It's a very small closet. It's tough for me to get you guys a view. I'll take some B-roll and throw it on top. But uh, the system is done, the adjustable shelf tower is completed, and the hanging section here inside to the left is completed as well. Very simple project uh, in conjunction with the CNC technology and the edge banding technology. Very, very easy and fast project. The client really likes uh, the adjustable shelves and how deep it is. Now this tower is very, very large and deep for this size closet but that's what the client wanted. She wanted to be able to store her blankets and bedding items and just bulkier totes and things like that. So the extra depth is gonna come really 
come in really handy for her. Uh, the hang section to the left, extremely simple. The only thing that I manufactured was the melamine top itself and then the edge banded front. The angle brackets and the metal HD closet rod is all purchased at the local big box store or your supplier. Now the concept of this video was very simple. I wanted to show you guys the concept of bringing CNC technology and edge banding uh, technology into your shop. So if you're a one man to five man cabinet shop out there, or you're still doing cabinetry the traditional um, with table saws and, and all that stuff, um, really take a look at bringing CNC technology into your shop. In the grand scheme of things, the, the cost of these units are not that much in compared to what the benefits and the efficiencies they bring your shop. With that being said, guys, let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I'd be happy to provide some feedback and answer any questions you may have. I'm Andy Glass with Glass Impressions. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh, don't forget to follow me on social media as I do pictures on Instagram and Facebook all along the way for projects as well as other woodworking and CNC projects. Now I'll see you next time.